these gentlemen are trying to sabotage my, my goal of beating the record of the shortest council meeting, so. <laughs> All right, okay. Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mr. Rickerman. Mr. McDowell, Mr. Duvall, Mr. Vine, Here. Mr. Davis, Here. Mayor Benjamin. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam City Manager, if we, we. Good to see all of you. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome <laughs> back. Thank you so much. At this time, we can um, do Did have a pledge of allegiance. Okay. Reverend McDowell, if you would, uh, could you please honor us by giving the invocation? Discuss the issues of our city. We simply ask that you might touch us individually and collectively. Allow us to sense your power and your nearness. Sensitize us to what we hear tonight. Undergird us with strength and with power to do justice. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 At this time, Ms. Ms. Devine, I would ask that we well, adopt the agenda with the addition of. Okay. Nine. While we're doing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> While we're doing that, if, if one second. Um, we um, want to welcome you back, Ms. Wilson, and, and we have missed you. Um, Mr. Palin has done an amazing job. <laughs> Mr. Palin's done an amazing job in your absence, but we did miss you, and we welcome you back, and we just wanted to uh, give you a small token of, of our love and happiness that you are back. <laughs> hey, my favorite, Tula. I love him. <laughs> Jeff, glad he's through. <laughs> We're so happy to have yeah. you back. Well, you. I um, I, I will tell you that, you know, this is a big part of my life, this job. So having to attend to your personal health for about two months um, put a lot in perspective for me. But I'm really glad to be back. And I, too, have to say thank you to Jeff and Pam, all the ACMs, all the team. They, I didn't worry one bit. So thank you, and I'm back, and I know y'all behaved, I was told, and everything's going as according to plan. So I think you have a, yes, sir. Uh, I, I told Teresa in an executive session that, that I thought that she needed to take about a two-month leave every year and rotate it among <laughs> the assistant city managers because Jeff has learned so much in the two months that he's been on the top with the uh, city manager's job that I think he has a new appreciation for what a, a city manager has to face on a daily, and, and it would help every one of those over there to just rotate this around. Well, I, I haven't shared that with them, Mr. Duvall, but um, since you did, I, I don't want it to be for health reasons, so we'll, we'll think about that. <laughs> Any one of them is capable, I can tell you that much, and I really appreciate them very much. Well, we appreciate them. They did an awesome job with you being out, and we know we have a fabulous team, yes, so we appreciate very, all of you. Very much so. The house is still standing, and there's absolutely, no smoke. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, come on, y'all. Try. Okay, we got to get back to my record. So, okay, let's get the adoption of the agenda. Did you have an item to add this evening? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I did want to add a resolution um, uh, for Midlands Gives Day. We can add that um, under the presentations. Yeah, under the presentations. Yes, ma'am. We'll do that. And with that, if you all could adopt the agenda. So move. Second. It's been moved and properly a second. The clerk would read the roll. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Thank you. If there is no public input related to the agenda items as outlined, we can seek an approval of the minutes from the March 20th, 2018 City Council meeting. Is there a motion? I move approval of the minutes of March the 20th. Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk would call the roll. 
Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you. Council is asked to approve the consent agenda items 3 through 13. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda items 3 through 13. Is there a second? second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, if the clerk will call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Moving into a period of presentations, Ms. Devine, if you would like to go ahead and take care of the Midlands Gives Proclamation first. I will. Um, and as we know, we don't have anyone here to accept it because everyone is really, really busy down at the State Museum. But for those of you um, who might not be aware, today is Midlands Gives. Um, it is the day of philanthropy throughout our community. We've got over 300 um, nonprofits uh, that are participating in Midlands Gives this year and around five o'clock, uh, the last I saw, about $1.1 million had been raised already uh, for uh, Midlands Yes. For organizations, um, people have until midnight to continue to give and they can give um, at midlandsgives.org. And um, standing in for the mayor today, I actually um, participated in the Nephron Mayor's Challenge where we had to um, put, um, and if we were able to get the, I'm not a golfer, so I don't know the things, the, 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 <laughs> the, the ball in the cup, then we were, um, then uh, a charity of our choice were, um, received a donation from Nephron. <laughs> and of course, my amazing, um, Put putt golf skills that I get from taking my kids to Frankie Fun Frankie's Fun Park. I made a hole in one, and so <laughs> was able to get uh, money donated to um, uh, camp. Oh, I can't think of it. No, not uh, it's the new camp. And Hay Hayward is not here. It was a selection by the mayor, um, but it was an amazing opportunity. But uh, with that said, we do have a proclamation. Whereas the Midlands region of South Carolina is blessed by numerous nonprofit organizations which provide invaluable services that make our community a better place to live, work, and play. And whereas Midlands Gives was established by Central Carolina Community Foundation as a regional day of giving online at www.midlandsgives.org. And whereas Midlands Gives is a day to celebrate philanthropy and a day upon which citizens rally together to support their favorite causes, build a stronger community, and give whatever they are able to give to participating nonprofits. And whereas through Central Carolina Community Foundation and its community partners, Midlands Gives shall inspire the public to support our nonprofit organizations on this day, May 1st. And whereas Midlands Gives is an opportunity to encourage citizens to share their giving experience and passion for charities via all available social media channels, encouraging others to give throughout this giving day. Now, therefore, on behalf of our Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin, all, along with all the members of Columbia City Council, we do hereby proclaim May 1st, 2018 as Midlands Gives Giving Day in Columbia, South Carolina, and we urge all of our citizens to participate and celebrate the great work of all of our area nonprofits and to support their efforts in a way that is both financially meaningful and personally rewarding. So we will make sure that this gets over to Central Carolina Community Foundation. Thank you, Ms. Devon. Um, our next item, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, is the National Drinking Water Week 2018 Proclamation. Okay. All right. So I have a proclamation. Uh, whereas fresh water is the Earth's most valuable natural resource, and whereas the city of Columbia is surrounded by irreplicable recreational irreplaceable, excuse me, recreational water resources that also provide our drinking water, and whereas the City of Columbia is dedicated to providing clean and reliable water service to all of our customers, and whereas the City of Columbia has committed to upgrading and modernizing the water infrastructure upon which future generations will depend, and whereas each citizen of our community is responsible for protecting our local streams, rivers, and lakes from runoff pollution to practice water conservation and to get involved in local water issues. Now, therefore, on behalf of our Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin and all the members of Columbia City Council, we do hereby proclaim May 6th 
through 12, 2018 to be National Drinking Water Week in the City of Columbia, and we urge all of our citizens to recognize and participate in this observance. So does this come to you, Clint? Yes, ma'am, and uh, I'd like to recognize some of our staff. If, okay. if you give me just a moment. Uh, Gordon Alexander, who's the superintendent of the Canal Water Plant. Gordon, if you'll please join us. And Trey Varn, who's the superintendent of our Lake Murray Water Plant. Y'all come on up. We need a photo op. Thank you, gentlemen, for all that you do to make sure we have clean and safe drinking water. And also ask that Jennifer Satterthwaite, who is our utilities communication coordinator, she helps us convey the good message of clean, safe drinking water to our customers. So Jennifer, stand up. Come up we'll, uh, yeah, come on up. Are you going to take this? <laughs> well, and before we go up, Clinton, I think all of us would echo this. Um, I think a lot of people take for granted um, a, the ability to have uh, clean drinking water, but you know, the flood really showed us what it means to have such an amazing, valuable resource within our community. And so we thank you guys so much for what y'all do. Um, and as someone who has, who travels a lot and drinks a lot of water out the tap, we have amazing water. <laughs> so, all right, come on guys. Thank you. Ms. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bayou are on a roll. So our next um, proclamation is for National Bike Month and Bicycle Safety Month. All right. Yay, Bike Month. <laughs> okay. So whereas the bicycle is a, vi a viable and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent form of recreation, Whereas many Colombians will experience the joys of bicycling during the month of May through participation in educational programs, races, community events, trail work days, helmet pr promotion activities, charity events, or just getting out and going for a ride. And whereas the Palmetto Trail attracts trail users each year from all around the state and providing economic health and scenic benefits to citizens of South Carolina, Colum South Carolina Columbia, and the Southeast, Whereas these bicycling activities and attractions have great potential to have a positive impact on Columbia's economy and tourism industry and to stimulate economic development by making the city attractive to businesses and citizens who enjoy spending time outdoors and leading healthy lifestyles. Whereas creating bicycle friendly communities has been shown to improve citizens' health, well being, and quality of life to boost community spirit, to improve traffic safety, and to reduce pollution and congestion. And whereas May has been declared National Bike Month and so, and so again in 2018, whereas the Bicycle Pedestrian of Action Committee, BPAC, bicycle clubs, schools, parks and recreation departments, police departments, hospitals, companies, and civic groups throughout the city and the region will be promoting bicycling as a leisure activity as well as an environmentally friendly alternative to automobile use during the month of May. And whereas the City of Columbia adopted the city's first bicycle and pedestrian plan on June 2nd, 2015 as the transportation element of the comprehensive plan known as Walk Bike Columbia. And this plan has a goal of creating great places for bicycling with a focus on evaluation and planning education, encouragement, evaluate, evaluation and planning, engineering and enforcement, and whereas the education of bicyclists and motorists as, the, as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and comfort of all users. Now therefore, be it resolved that the members of Columbia City Council hereby recognize the month of May 2018 
as National Bike Month and Bicycle Safety Month and the week of May 14th through 18th, 2018 as Bike to Work Week and Bike to Work Day on May 18th, 2018. And be it further resolved that the City of Columbia urges all of our citizens to support bicycling and to participate in the events plan and urge all road users to share the road safely with bicyclists. Right. And that is our resolution. We have somebody from BPAC. Ms. Wilson, before we go on, I know I, I met with um, the leadership at BPAC, um, and I think this year um, Bike Month is being um, planned as usual, but I think next year there might be some transition in um, the help that we've gotten in planning it, and so we need to make sure that um, the city is um, has somebody, whether it's um, special projects within the city or another partner, to make sure that we have Bike Month activities continuing um, throughout, you know, throughout the, well, throughout the year, but definitely for next, starting in 2019, um, we won't have a partner who will plan those activities. Okay. We've got all the right staff in the room to yes. remind me, so yes, ma'am. Our next proclamation, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, is for National Preservation Month. All righty. This is going to go to Amy. Or, okay. A proclamation. Whereas the City of Columbia continues to benefit from historic preservation as an effective tool for economic and sustainable development, tourism promotion, community revitalization, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for the City of Columbia, as well as for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds. And whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that have shaped us as a nation and as a community. Now, therefore, on behalf of our Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin and all the members of Columbia City Council, we do hereby proclaim May 2018 as National Preservation Month in the great city of Columbia, and we urge all of our citizens to recognize and participate in its observance. Can I, can I offer just a word? I promise to keep you on schedule. You're good. <laughs> we'll, we'll get some time. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you for um, the resolution. And please, everybody, come out and celebrate May in Columbia as Historic Preservation Month. We have a fabulous city with terrific history. And this we have a lot of events going on this month in the city to celebrate that. So we have an architectural scavenger hunt along Main Street, month long, month of May. We have another architectural scavenger hunt going on in historic Melrose. It's a family friendly event. Um, that one will be May 20th, a Sunday. Uh, this Wednesday, we have Enjoy SC, making history at the State House from 11.30 to 1.30 and again on Sunday from one to three when we're gonna have historic images or Historic Columbia will have historic images of main streets across the state um, with current pictures of those main streets. And it's just a way for the public to engage there. We've got a cemetery workshop for those people who are interested in taking care of their headstones and cemeteries and all of our small churches across the city. This when, I mean this um, Saturday, starting at 9.30 till 12. And uh, we also have a preservation bike ride going mm -hmm. on on Saturday, May 19th. And I challenge all of our city council people <laughs> to come out to that. Yeah. I like putting those two things together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Duvall. Oh, 
I have been noticing on um, Cola Daily that the little thing that pops up on your computer every morning, they have had several very good um, photograph of Columbia and different, they had the Fourth Ward, they've had... Um, Ward uh, One. Um, they did something I mean, Sunday. Ward One. Uh -huh. uh, they've had um, Waverly right. and, and several others. Right. Main Street. It's, they're a terrific resource for getting that information out there in a really accessible way. And I'm, pictures, I'm pictures I had never seen, too. Yeah. So they, they've really dug into the vault to come up with these pictures. Uh, it's very interesting to see it. I'm glad you're enjoying that. That's yeah. good. There's a lot out there. Yeah, and I would add, I know um, Councilman McDowell and I had the opportunity to get a sneak, pre a sneak peek of the Hampton Preston Mansion that I think May 19th is that reopening as well. May 12th. May 12th? 12th, I believe. It's, I know it's a, it's a Saturday coming up. Um, right, Saturday, May 12th. May 12th, yeah. Um, and so I would definitely encourage everyone to see that. I mean, the um, it's... It is a testament to Historic Columbia and, and their staff. They have reinterpreted um, the house and they're actually actively recognizing the role that enslaved Americans played in, um, in the, the, the Hampton Preston family and the mansion. And, and so I think it's, it'll be eye-opening for people to see. Yeah, they're doing a great job there. Um, and they've done a lot of work structurally on that house, so it continues to be a testament. Uh, which is very important. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, so can we give it, Amy? Madam Mayor Pro Tem and Council, item 17 is a resolution number R2018-035 to declare May 6th through the 12th, 2018 as Municipal Clerks Week in South Carolina to recognize and honor the valuable contributions that municipal clerks make to cities and towns in South Carolina and to recognize the 40th anniversary of the Municipal Finance Officers Clerks and Treasurers Association an affiliate of the Municipal Association of South Carolina. So, Ms. Devine, I must say that we know we have the best yes. clerk. We do. I was the about to say <laughs> <laughs> And it's very hard to get one over on her. So, mm -hmm. the Municipal Association has sent something out to managers saying, figure out how to do this, basically, because, you know, they can't do it th for themselves. And so, we've been trying all week to get this done, but it's not framed, Erica. And her name is noted in the document because she had to sign it. So we, couldn't, we couldn't frame it. We couldn't even frame it until she got to sign it. But we do want you all to present this to Erica because we know that we could not get much done without her. And she is... Um, And the only thing I will add as you all go to meet with her for the photo is that Erica has gained her certified municipal clerk status designation and is well on her way to be a master clerk. So we have one of the very best clerks that I could wish for. Thank you. <laughs> And we will get it framed, Ms. Erica. We also want to recognize Ms. Daniels for all the work that she does in the clerk's office as well. Yes, and I, I, we all echo 
how amazing uh, Erica is and that we love her dearly and that um, we take for granted all the work that goes into keeping our stuff straight and keeping everything in tow. And I'll say when a constituent is looking for something and I say, you know, I know we passed that somewhere. I couldn't tell you the date, but let me find out and I'll email Erica. And I'm always amazed within an hour, if that long, she's sending, you know, a link to the minutes and where it is. And so mm -hmm. she, she does an amazing job. Mayor Pretend. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaking in, on behalf of municipal clerks, the clerk's position is the only position required to be hired by the cities and towns in South Carolina. Uh, the elected officials are part of the staff, but the clerk is the only one that's required by each one of the three forms of government to be hired. And we have 270 cities and towns in South Carolina a thousand, a half of those are less than a thousand in population. So when these small cities hire a clerk, they're not only hiring a clerk, they're hiring a finance director, they're hiring a city manager, they're hiring everything else too, because a lot of times the clerk is the only thing, the only person that's actually on staff in these small cities. So Erica has got a, a, uh, a great education from the certified course and I'm looking forward to her getting that master. She is a wonderful municipal clerk. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We will move into the zoning planning matters public hearing and first reading item. Uh, there's one item here, number 18. Um, I know Ms. Hampton can come forward if you all need her to, but if not, it's the annexation as listed on 2716 Shop Road. It's a public hearing, so is there anybody here to speak for or against this matter? Seeing none, is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Ordinance first reading, ordinance number 2018-016 to amend section 21-127, the basis for establishing areas of special flood hazard. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions, Ms. Higgins, our city engineers here, if you do, regarding just our flood maps and those updates. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Dana? Move approval. I read it. Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none of Kirk will call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Other matters, item 20, council is asked to approve the installation of three speed humps in the Oakwood Court neighborhood as requested by the Public Works Department. Move to approve. Second. It's been probably moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, if the clerk will call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Item 21, Council is asked to approve the installation of three additional street lights on Park Street as requested by the Traffic Engineering Division. Is Move approval. Second. Has it been properly moved and second? Discussion? If the clerk would call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I am not sure if any of your colleagues or you have any committee, committee reports report. or referrals at any this report time. Reports or referrals? No. Okay, seeing none, we're to appearance of public. Uh, did you sign in? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Polaris? And if anybody else signed in, I'll recognize them soon. I'm sorry. Ms. Polaris? Hi. Um, I am Ursula Polaris. I have lived in Rosewood for over 20 years. I really don't want to be here. Well, I forgot to say hello, City Council, and everyone here. Uh, a little bit nervous, so just bear with me. I really don't want to be here, but I'm compelled because of the dire consequences I am facing because of code enforcement gone awry. Hopefully, there will not be retaliation for what I'm going to share. I'm taking a risk, and it may not be prudent, but it can't be wrong to speak from my heart. 
There is limited time, so I really won't be able to get into it. I just want to be treated fairly, without discrimination and harassment. No one wants compliance of the pressing issues more than I do. I want that. I have been working at it, but time stops for no one. And I'm older, and with all good intentions, things take longer to accomplish. Weather limitations, taking care of parents, and having health problems myself. These aren't excuses, but it's partial explanation. Life happens to all of us. Communication is important. Had there been communication, things would be different, I have no doubt. I asked for communication and explanation from day one, only, be, only to be dismissed and shut down. In addition, there is a sexual harassment by the code enforcer I'm dealing with. It happened in July 2016. I was in shock by his behavior. I reported it to his supervisor, Mike O'Neill. Without going into great detail, I told him that this person was aggressive and inappropriate. I no longer feel safe, and I don't ever want him to come to my home alone. Four months later, November 2016, he gives me a citation, first offense nuisance, without explanation, and he says, see you in court. I reported the sexual harassment in April 2017. The city waited over two months to inform me that it was misfiled and that it should be reported to internal affair or affairs. I may understand a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but over two months, that leaves room to wonder and bring up more questions than answers, one of many red flags. Not only am I subjected to continue to interact with him, he is still in the position to make decisions about me and my property, my home. This is extremely stress, stressful and unbearable. I feel that I am on the edge of a breakdown, even though I don't really know what that's like. But I've tolerated and been the target of many things. But I am resilient because I have strong faith. And that keeps me going forward. And I'm blessed with friends as well. I have filed FOIA to have no information, but to be stated that I couldn't use it to circumvent some circumstance. I just wanted to be informed. I wanted more explanation of what was going on. Code enforcement is open to interpretation and somewhat subjective. How can this code person be standing literally next door in a violation and that not be addressed or cited? I don't want that for anyone else. I've never done that. But there's a different measuring stick for me. I am single and Latina. Discrimination and harassment are blatantly evident and of major concern or should be of major concern to everyone. I often come to these meetings and we start with prayer. We ask for guidance and peaceful resolution and an open heart. I would like a little of that directed in my direction, please. What I would like is to have open communication and continue to work and to clear my property. How? with the help and support of Rosewood Rangers. I don't know if you're familiar with that group, I'll be glad to tell you more about that, but they're neighbors literally helping each other and other friends. They've come twice and will continue to come on the weekends to help organize and clear out things. I've been reluctant to ask for help because I'm usually helping others. It's hard to ask for help. But now, with that help, and I actually in January asked to speak to the city to realize that I need some assistance. I can't do it by myself but the Rosewood Rangers and some other neighbors have continued to uh, help, want to help, and so I feel like I can have all of that done this summer by September 1st. I'd also like my record cleared and expunged because this should have never happened. I would like a peaceful resolution, and this is a solution that I bring before you. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, the Rosewood Rangers or anything else, I'll be glad to answer that. I don't think we do. Thank you, or Ms. Polaris. We appreciate you you coming forward. Right. Okay. Um, Nikki, was there a sign-in sheet? Was there anybody else that signed? Okay. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to address council? Yay, seeing none. Is there a motion for a <laughs> debatable move, motion? Second. So move. Second. Is it <laughs> the clerk will call a roll? Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Okay, what time is it? Yay! Thank you.
three minutes. Yay! I beat the record. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. We appreciate it.